Hello, I'm Joshua. And I'm Mary, and welcome to From the Heart. Orlando is widely known for its tourist spots and attractions, but many people don't know about its thriving arts community. We're excited to introduce to you passionate artists and leaders whose talents shape our arts community. How do they create and why? And how will Orlando benefit from a growing arts presence? On each episode, we'll meet guests who are influential leaders and artists who are truly making a difference. From the Heart. Hello everyone, welcome to From the Heart. I'm Joshua. And I'm Mary. And we're excited to bring to you all that's new and good when it comes to the arts in Central Florida. Today we're talking with Les Lesnick, who's been an arts advocate for over 30 years and a leader of the visual arts circuit as a national award-winning photographer. An advisor and juror to major art shows throughout the country, he's here to share his views on how the visual arts can make a difference to all of us here in Central Florida. Welcome, Les. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. So glad you're Pleased here. Pleased to be here. <laughs> Les, tell us about your journey as an artist. How did it start? I've always been interested in photography. Got my first camera when I was in the fourth grade, the Pony 135, Kodak Pony. <laughs> I still have it. It doesn't work. Oh. <laughs> but I still have it, and I've always been interested in photography. And one time uh, uh, in my early 30s, I was dating a girl who did the Winter Park Sidewalk Art Festival. And she introduced me to some of her friends, and that kind of sparked an interest. And I said, maybe I ought to do this. And then I thought to myself, well, the only way I can find out if I'm any good in photography is to compete. Mm. And so I just started entering shows with no m guides, no mentorship, no nothing. What did you like to photograph? I mean, was it nature? Was it people? What, what got you going? Well, what got me going originally was people. I practice on all my friends, families, but particularly small children. Hmm. And that's what got me into my very first show. Uh, one of my very first shows happened to be the very first Disney show. And that was uh, my s three slides to get into the show were three slides of children running through fields. Interestingly, it would never get me into any show today, <laughs> but back then I think that was 74, 75. I think 75 was the very first Disney show. Hmm but it was children. Why do you say it wouldn't get you into a show today? Because our, our, our sensibilities regarding art have mm. changed, mm. our tastes have changed, uh, our level of sophistication, especially, of course, as you know, I come from the art fair world, the art festival world, and the level of sophistication in the world of art festivals, I think has increased very dramatically in the last especially 10 to 15 years. So when we started out, uh, and believe it or not, the very first outdoor art fair in America was in 1930, but they didn't hit Florida until about 59 or 60 in mm. Miami. But um, Where was the first one in the 30s? Uh, was uh, in Massachusetts, uh, the, uh, the island off the coast of Massachusetts. Oh. And then the, the second one was, uh, which is still in existence and running today, and I spoke to the director just yesterday over the phone, is in New York City uh, uh, around Washington Square, New Nantucket. That's the one that's okay. in Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nantucket still runs wow. today. It's a one-day show. It runs two different, week, two different days in the summer. It's the only show I've ever heard of that if it rains that day, everybody comes back the following week. <laughs> Which tells me, though, that if you're doing it for a living, you can't do that show because you, you gotta have go a on schedule. You've yeah. got to go on to the next one. So, so I'm guessing it's mostly locals. So, Les, I'm looking forward to you educating us today on a lot of things, one of those being about the, the art fair. You know, if we go to an art fair, uh, what, what would we expect? What would we see? What would we experience? For someone like me who hasn't been to a lot, unfortunately, which I hope to change that, tell me what, what my experience would be like. I think your experience, Josh, at different fairs would be different experiences. I've come to divide art fairs into different tiers of, and basic, basically their levels of sophistication. A top tier, second tier, a third tier, and maybe a fourth or the, the lower tier. Which is not to imply 
that you should never go to a lower or fourth tier show mm -hmm. because since I retired from the circuit, which was in 06, I have gained a newfound respect and admiration for the smaller town, lower tier shows mm -hmm. because what it taught me when I was, when I was uh, a little bit arrogant back in the days <laughs> when I did, the, back in the days when I did the shows, I wouldn't do the small town shows, the podunk little shows that nobody heard of. It was beneath my dignity. It was a waste of time. I was arrogant. <laughs> but, but what I've learned was that... And then we get older and wiser. <laughs> that's absolutely true. Yeah. And, and I've, since 06, I've helped a number of small town shows, like this little spring show up in DeLand mm -hmm. that I never would have done, never went to. It's a wonderful little mm -hmm. show. Uh, but there you'll see art that you won't see, for example, at the Winter Park Show or Disney, which is temporarily defunct according to Disney, or any of the more top tier shows. You'll see a different kind of art at this little Deland show. Is that where you might find little um, wind chimes made out of spoons or forks? Or Well, you're kind of on the right track, Mary, and, and I'm the first to tell you what a small town show like Kissimmee, the Osceola mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. Osceola show, I tell them, you need a knife maker because <laughs> that's your crowd. Yeah. They're ranchers, they're mm -hmm. cowboys. And maybe two knife makers, but not more than two. Mm -hmm. Would a knife maker ever make it into St. Louis or Kansas City or Winter Park? Mm -hmm. Unlikely. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. I also tell shows like Osceola, maybe like Mary Heathrow, you need a guy who, may, or could I, I use guys, the, the <laughs> pronoun, but could be a gala as well. But you need someone, for example, who makes fountain pens mm -hmm. because the public loves it. And the guy who makes fountain pens is going to leave very happy because mm -hmm. he's going to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. now, it's functional well, art. It's functional. Yeah. <laughs> but would a pen maker ever make it into Kansas City or Denver's Cherry Creek or Winter Park here? It's very unlikely. So it's really about the market that comes to that fair, which I, kind of dictates what kind of art is in, is... Presented. Right. I recently worked with the city of Claremont, and it's a very delicate balance. They want to make it a very, very high-end show, very high-end. And I've had to remind them, yes, you may get the high-end artists, but will they sell anything? So are they going to leave happy? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Mm -hmm. So you need somebody, you need people there, the lower end, not in quality, but in price point, mm -hmm. to to satisfy your market, which in that case is also pretty rural. It's almost mm. like setting up all, like you would in, in one of your concerts. Yeah. You put some classics in, but you introduce and teach them mm -hmm. newer music. and So the artists are of all different types, but majority of what's going to make them. Right. You, you, you have sell. to satisfy the market mm -hmm. or you won't have a market. And then you can let it evolve. And I think part of our function, you, Mary, and you, Joshua, and me, and what we've decided to do in our lives in the art world is to educate. And, and that's what I think art festivals are. That's part of their primary responsibility is to educate as well. That's what the arts does. Thank you so much for this time with you. Absolutely. We are going to have more time with you, which makes us especially happy. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, we're going to be back in just a little while with Les Lesnick. It's been a pleasure being with him, and we're going to learn more about his journey as an artist, what's out there, and how you might enjoy an art festival yourself. Thank you for joining us from the heart.